Hello, guys. How are you? Oh, you know, there's always that awkward first couple of minutes when you're doing a Facebook Live and you have nobody live with you yet, <laughs> but nobody knows that there's nobody live with you. It's so funny. I just had to mention that. So, ah, oh, thank you so much for joining me today, everybody who will be joining now and in the future. Um, I didn't do a coffee chat last week. We were away in, on a Caribbean tropical dream vacation in St. Lucia. It was Travis, my husband, myself, and our two kids, our first family vacation of four together. And it was so glorious and magical. And if you are my friend on Facebook, I posted some amazing pictures. I highly recommend it. We stayed at Coconut Bay Resort on St. Lucia Island. It was It's a 4.7 star resort and it is glorious. Um, yes. So if you're looking for a family vacation spot, head there. Or even, they even have a part of the resort that is adults only. So yeah, it's, it's like everything. Ah, and so many. Okay. And I want to update you guys. Oh my God. I'm so excited. I finally ordered my selfie stick tripod for pictures and a ring light, <laughs> which I have known that I've needed to get those so I can not so I can, but you know, it contributes to creating a website when you can take pictures of yourself and class graphics, et cetera, et cetera. And I started working with Leah Black. She's an amazing gal. She's from North Dakota and she is magic with graphics and branding. And um, we, our first chat was in January and I think I mentioned it on our coffee chat actually. <clears throat> um, so she is, I'm meeting with her later today. She has some logos ready for me for Catherine Oster and uh, she's been creating some class graphics for me and <laughs> I'm sending her pictures to use and she's like can I give you some selfie tips I'm like yes please do and so she did and then she's like and you can get these really cool tripods with a remote from Amazon I'm like oh my god I know I need to order that so ordered and new website I don't know when it's gonna come when I like spring summer but anyway, for now, I'm really enjoying using the Kajabi platform for creating my online classes. And yeah, okay. So that's that. I actually um, have a question. I have a question emailed in for the show today that we're going to chat about. So I'm going to bring that up. And if you would like to send me a question, if you would like, like, I really try to stick with Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, but sometimes life happens and that just doesn't work. Um, so I always let my email list know on Monday what time and day I'll be going live. So you can join me if it works for you. And then I also ask them if they have any questions or anything they would like more information on. And I've been getting questions. I'm so excited. So if you would like to be able to send me in a question or a topic, anything you'd like more information on. I will put a link with this video in the top in the description after it's done. And you can click there and sign up for my email list. So you can do that. Okay, so the question for this week is, good morning. I would like more information about regressing or going backwards. I buy all of the courses and I ask all the questions and I have some success. And then, question mark, question mark, I step back or I go back to my usual self. Aha! Okay, so first of all, thank you for sending in your question. I'm so grateful. And what really popped for me was well, you, some of the words you said. Um, I go back to my usual self. So what really popped to talk about was the willingness to lose everything and Lori and I are doing a book club right now on this book, I Cannot Do It, Beyond the Utopian Ideal. There, that's better. And we just had our first book reading on Monday, and it was amazing, amazing, amazing. And we're going to do three more Zooms, and if you want to join us, you still can. It's 47 Canadian dollars. You will get the recordings from the first class. 
and all the home play and this book is like wow okay so the willingness to lose everything so now yeah I'm just gonna read from the book and then um, we are going to ask some questions okay so not only do you have to be willing to lose your constructs and utopian ideals, you also have to be willing to lose your convictions and points of view. Once you're willing to lose everything, a different possibility can show up for you and you will be unfettered by limitation. So truth, and I know this, this showed up for me a lot too in the beginning um, when I first started really choosing classes and changing and creating my life. Um, I would find myself stuck or I would notice my pattern of going back to what I always did and hey Bobby and I noticed that when I started to change things for me I would get really uncomfortable and then not uncomfortable like in a physical way but uncomfortable in an energetic way where I feel like something's wrong because I don't know what's happening anymore because all those energetic points of view that I had about myself and how I defined myself started to go away and there was this sense of so much space that was I've never had before it was undefinable to me and so it was so different and I was so uncomfortable then I would just go back I'd be like oh no I'm having my point of view back or no I'm having my judgment back or no I'm having this old reality of money back that I know because I know it and I'm comfortable with it even though I say I want to change it do I really am I really willing to be in the unknown with money or am I would I rather have um, what I know with money, even though it's not enough, even though it pisses me off, even though I'm frustrated with it, I'm comfortable with it. I know this. I don't know what's beyond that. And so I'm going to step into the beyond that and it'll be fun. But then all of a sudden, boop, no, I'm going to go back to being comfortable and to what I know. So, so I wonder if that's also coming up for you. Um, so truth are you willing to be uncomfortable in your relationship? Are you willing to be uncomfortable and not know who you are anymore? Are you willing to be undefinable to your family? So a lot of that stuff comes up when you're really starting to choose and change things. And, and it's just, willingness to look at it how much would it would it disrupt your family members if you changed as much as you know is possible as much as you're asking for and are you keeping yourself the same so they're comfortable around you or anybody else and what about you are you keeping yourself the same in the areas so you're comfortable with you Okay, so I'm going to read part of this book because it's brilliant and we'll talk about things. So, commitment and the willingness to lose everything. Oh, wait. Okay, making a total commitment to you. You may think that losing something means giving it up or that you can't have it. But losing something means you actually get more of it. For example, when you make a commitment to you, you have to be willing to lose yourself in order to have more of you. You are aware of who you are and you have no point of view about it. You know you can change if you choose to and that's the most important thing to get. You know you can change if you choose to. If you don't have that, then you haven't created a place where you are in a constant state of creation. You are trying to function from the constructs and limitations of the past. So for the gal that emailed me the question, are you trying, truth, are you still trying to function from the constructs and the limitations of the past? Yes or no. <clears throat> so that place of constructs and limitations is probably where you're functioning from right now. You already have decided who you are 
and you don't realize that this decision is actually crippling you. You think your point of view of you is you. You think your point of view of you is you. It's not. A point of view is not you. Every point of view you have about you creates the not you that's messing you up. Every point of view you have about you, every point of view you have about this is how I handle money, this is how I eat food, this is how I am with my body, this is how I am in relationship with my husband. Every point of view you have about you creates the not you that's messing you up. So you never have to actually be committed to you. So truth, are you willing to lose all the things about you that aren't really you, but you're comfortable with them, you've defined yourself by them. What about your looks? You have created your looks. Your looks are a great weapon or they're a great tool. You may not be willing to lose them. If you're not willing to lose them, then you create a constant state of judging your looks, and in so doing, you create what you judge to be the wrongness of the way you look. You have to be willing to lose your heritage, your nationality, your race, your sexual orientation, and anything else you think identifies and defines who you are. Because whenever you attempt to define anything, you contract your awareness. Whatever you think you are, you are not. Why is that? Because you, as you, as the infinite being that you truly are, are not definable. Ah, so truth. Is there anywhere or anything in your life that you are not willing to lose? That's keeping you staying the same. Because if you changed, you might risk losing whatever that thing is. And it doesn't have to be a bad thing. Um, so the next part of the chapter. Are you willing to risk losing everything? People don't want to know they can lose anything. They think losing is actually the worst thing they can do. But if you're willing to risk losing everything, you open the door to all that is possible. And Gary says, four times in my life, I have lost everything I owned. I started over again. For me, the idea of losing everything is, so what? Is it going to kill me? No. Is it going to change things? Yes. That's all it's going to do. It's going to change things. You need to recognize that energy never ceases to exist. So you can't really lose anything anyway, because energy always is. Energy can change. It can alter. It can take on different forms, but it cannot be destroyed. Therefore, the idea of loss is the greatest lie that we buy. I see thousands of people trying to hold on to what they've got, and they're saying, Dear God, please don't let me lose everything, because if I lose everything I have, I will have nothing. No, you actually have everything when you have you, but you don't consider it valuable to you. You think that the things you have, the things as your money, your house, your car, or your clothes, are more valuable to you than yourself. Huh. And the reality is, when you lose everything and you still have you, you have everything worth having. What's the most important thing in your life? What has the highest value to you? Maybe you've decided the most valuable thing in your life is your hair, and that's the one thing you're not willing to lose. And then suddenly something occurs like cancer and chemo, and the thing you're unwilling to lose, you have now lost. This happened to a friend of mine. And she used to have massive amounts of beautiful hair. Her hair was her pride and joy. And then she lost it all. This is the kind of thing we, do, we can do to ourselves to make us seek a larger universe. And in my friend's case, it worked. After she lost her hair, all kinds of amazing possibilities suddenly opened up to her. The truth is, you can gain everything by what you're willing to lose. You don't have the capacity to truly choose everything until you're willing to lose anything and everything. So my question to you, my sweet email friend, is truth, 
What are you unwilling to lose that if you would lose it, would give you everything you are asking for and more? And it can be people in our lives. It can be our family. I mean, I know, for example, for me and my husband. Um, so I've been, I've been taking access classes now um, since 2014. So it'll be almost six years. And Travis, my husband, I mean, he doesn't really, he doesn't take classes. He doesn't, I don't run his bars really. I've maybe run them twice. And when I, what I really noticed is when I would come home from a class, like, so I've, I've traveled to classes, to Paris, to Seattle, to different places, to certified facilitator training, or even when I've taken a class online or when I've hosted a class, things will get really weird with him. And I won't be able to tell you exactly what's weird about it, but again, it's that feeling like something is wrong. And what I've really started to recognize is, oh my God, this is the change I've been asking for showing up. And Travis is getting really uncomfortable again because I'm changing. And in order for him to actually stay and have a relationship with me, he actually has to change as well. And we have to come to a couple places in our relationship where it's almost been done. Um, and I truly got to the space of the willingness to lose him or to have him leave or for us to get separated. Um, and what has happened is he hasn't actually chosen that. He's actually chosen to step up and become greater. And our relationship has gotten greater because of that. But I did notice in the past, before I was willing to actually let it go, I would allow it to control me and to control the change that I would have in my world. And I wouldn't change too much in case he got uncomfortable or I would go back. And I'm not saying that for you, it's a person, but you know, look at these things in our lives, like becoming conscious of what's really going on. So truth, what are you unwilling to lose that if you would lose it, would allow you to have the, and be and receive the changes that you are asking for. And maybe that wasn't relevant to you at all. So if you would like to email me back and let me know if you have any more questions after this, please do. And for anybody that would like to join us on the book club, again, I'll post the link with this video. It's brilliant. It's amazing. You will get all the recordings. And I think that's it for this week. All right. Bye-bye, guys. Have an amazing rest of your day.